Hello, people of the internet. Josh here. I've received some requests to make a video about my DIY solar generator. So that's what we'll be doing today. Here we go. So here she is, the DIY solar generator. Let's go over the features. Over here I have one 12 volt cigarette lighter socket and one SAE port. And this switch connects the 12 volt to the battery. On this side I have my 110 AC outlets and this switch switches on the inverter. This SAE port goes to the solar charger. It has a display that shows the voltage of the system and the battery charge level. Here you can see where the wires go into the solar charge controller. On the left is where you plug in the solar panel and in the middle is where you plug in the battery. On the right is for a load but I have my load connected directly to the battery with an inline fuse inside the case. This case is an ammo box from Harbor Freight. I have holes cut in the top for my ports and for my switches. Around the middle I have a nylon strap that helps with the weight of the battery. So let's go inside. Just open this. Inside we have a 55 amp hour AGM battery. This battery is normally used for electric wheelchairs. It has about 660 watt hours. Because of the nature of a deep cycle battery, you're not supposed to drain it more than 80% to prolong the life of the battery. So that gives us about 520. Over here we have a 750 watt inverter. This is from Harbor Freight. I used it mostly because I just had this inverter lying around already. A modified sine wave inverter will be quite a bit cheaper and usually smaller than a pure sine wave inverter which helps with this project because it keeps it low cost and it helps it to fit inside of this case easier. This white cable is one that I got from Home Depot for about $3.50. I bought it because of the 90 degree flat plug. You need that to clear the lid when it's closed. And it runs through here. and is wired into my plugs on the outside. It's as simple as cutting the wires and following them out to these leads here. I cut these two holes in order for the posts of the battery to fit inside of the case. When you close it up, you can see that they stick through these holes. This is our inverter switch which I can show you runs down to here and it is a bypass of this switch which means I just unscrewed this front plate and I soldered it onto each side of this switch. That way I don't have to open up the box in order to switch on the inverter. I can just use the switch on the outside. Here is our solar charge controller. 
If you look down here, you can see where the wires go to the battery and to the solar panel port. These two wires go to the solar panel. They run through the box and up into the lid. And they run out to this port, which you would then plug the solar panel into. This switch goes to the positive line to our 12 volt accessories. This black one is our, our ground cord. It goes straight to the ground terminal of the battery. And then through this switch, it goes through an inline fuse and connects also to the positive terminal of our battery. If you look down here, I have pieces of foam that are holding the battery and the other components in place. You need space around for ventilation and it also affords that. In this top section, we have the wiring for our ports. We have two holes, this side for the AC and for the solar are wired in through this adapter which I 3D printed but I will leave a link in the description to one that you can buy. Here is also for our AC port. They are wired in parallel so that I wouldn't have to run two wires to the battery. Because the battery terminals come through the top of this we can attach alligator clips to connect directly to the battery if needed. The convention for these ports is for the naked post, this one, to be connected to the negative terminal and the shrouded post, this one, to be connected to the positive. This prevents shorts when an extension touches the body of a vehicle that is grounded to the battery. So I made sure that this side is connected to the negative terminal and the other side is connected to the positive. The wires don't always reflect this, so you have to make sure when you wire it up. For your convenience, I have included this wiring diagram of my generator. As usual, red is positive and black is negative. This connector is to flip the polarization of an accessory. If you find that your solar panel is wired opposite to the convention, then you can use this to flip the polarization and still use that accessory. Well, that's about it for this video on my DIY solar generator. The total cost of this project is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $200. I built this out of components that I mostly had left over, so the cost to me was around $20. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe to my channel like this video and comment below if you have any questions about this project or if you have any ideas for another video. Anyway, that's about it for today. This is Josh from Any Adventure. Have a good day.